Stacy Howard says, 47, female, work my ass off, more confident than ever, still look fabulous and expect nothing to be handed to me. This is humorous. Do you want to know what else is humorous? Is that you're 47 and you think you look fabulous. Fabulous. That, that to me is, listen, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you're 47 and work your ass off. And I'm happy that you're confident. But at 47, you, you don't look, you don't look fabulous, sweetheart. It was like that dude who called in the Red Man group, said that his girl was a nine. And then later on, we found out she was 44 years old. <laughs> we were all like, whoa, wait a minute. No such thing as a 44-year-old nine. Let's continue. Uh, listen, hit dog syndrome with Stacy, right? She's watching the show. She knows this is true. If 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 you have to if you have to uh, if you have to come in here and tell me that you still look fabulous, then you probably don't look fabulous. That would be like me watching a you watching a video of girls talking about oh my god all these guys with these small dicks and me going into that and saying you know what I don't have a small dick. I'm 41 years old and I got a 41 inch cock. Right? That's really kind of what Stacy did. 47 and still look fabulous. No, 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 you don't. Listen, listen, I'm sure you look very nice. I'm sure you look very nice, but you look nothing like you did when you were 27. 47. Jesus Christ. She, dude. I mean, she's probably in menopause at this point, right? Ay, ay, ay. Wow. 47 and still look fabulous. You see how delusional women are, right? <sighs> yeah, D. Gary says it. Listen, good energy, though. You know, she came in uh, with the hot fire. Number three, the third reason why men always have the last laugh, like I just did with Stacy, who's probably still at work because she is 47, fabulous, and works her ass off. And this is directly tied to Stacy. I love it when females comment in this regard and give me the, and just make things poetic. The more they accomplish, the less attractive they are. The more they accomplish, the less attractive they are. This is the third reason why men always win in the end. Stacy, if you're watching, listen up. Women are making more than they've ever made in history. They're making more money than they've ever made ever. They're more influential, and they have more power than they've ever had. The power and influence and money that women have today is unprecedented. Now, this is exactly what feminists wanted. But what they didn't take into account... What they didn't take into account was the effect that all of this money and power and influence would have on a woman's value in the sexual marketplace. And when I say sexual marketplace, I'm talking about a woman's overall attractiveness with regards to beauty, her femininity, her personality, etc. Stacey says she's 47 and fabulous, but are you married? Right? You have a boyfriend? Yeah, I didn't think so. You see, the more a woman accomplishes, the more money she makes, the more power and influence she gets, the further she shrinks her pool of potential suitors. In other words, the more status a woman has, the few, the fewer the men she'll have to choose from. Stacy doesn't want to fuck down. Stacy doesn't want to date down. She doesn't want to marry down. Stacy wants to fuck up. She wants to date up. She wants to marry up. Stacy's not the. Stacy is not going to give the time of day to men who have less money less power, less status than they do. It's not in their DNA. Remember, guys, remember, the rule of hypergamy is that women will always try to consolidate on the highest value men available to her. But the caveat is that most of those men have to have more value than they do as women. So while Stacy at 47 still looks fabulous and works her ass off, she's not going to be attracted to the janitor. Donna, the executive at XYZ Fortune 500 company, she's not going to fuck the janitor, or rather, she's not going to fuck the junior partner at a big law firm. She wants to fuck the guy with his name on the door of that law firm. 
She's not going to date Steve, the warehouse supervisor. She wants to date the guy who owns the company Steve works for. Okay? Carol, the regional vice president of ABC multinational conglomerate, doesn't want to marry the company accountant. She wants to marry the CEO. Now, some women might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. She has to have standards. And they would be absolutely right. Touche. But here's the problem, Stacy. The math doesn't work. You see, Stacy, there are far more Steves and junior partners and CPAs out there than there are company owners, CEOs, and senior partners at big law firms. Then Stacy might come out and say, well, there are far more male executive and CEOs than female executives and CEOs, so there are plenty to go around for all of the powerful women. In fact, they'd have their pick of all of the most rich and powerful men. They'd be a power couple. And to that, you would be absolutely wrong, Stacy. Yes, there are way more male CEOs and executives than females. You know, that whole male privilege thing, right? But high-value men like this don't want to date female vice presidents, Stacy. They don't want to marry these high-status women. They don't want to fuck women CEOs. They don't want relationships with 47-year-old women who work their asses off who think they still look fabulous. They don't want relationships with women who have masculine personalities. Well, how do you know they're masculine, Donovan? Because they are where they are. You don't become a senior partner at a law firm by being a feminine, kind woman. You gotta be a fucking killer. You gotta be cutthroat. You don't rise through the ranks to become an executive at a Fortune 500 company without being driven and ultra-competitive. And any woman who accomplishes these things has to exhibit masculine characteristics and do it consistently and do it for a while. And when she finally gets to where she wants, as soon as she reaches the pinnacle of her company, she has quite literally forgotten how to be a woman, how to be a lady, how to be feminine. And high-value men, executives, CEOs, rich men, they're not looking to be with a woman who acts like a man. They don't want to be with a woman with a scorned disposition. They don't want to be with 47-year-old women who are fabulous and work their asses off. They're not looking to get with women who are going to compete with them or a woman who's stubborn because she feels like she has something to prove to him. These men don't want women like Stacy. They want Stacy from 25 years ago. They want the Stacy who was feminine, kind, ladylike, submissive. They want Stacy. They want Stacy before Stacy went off to college. Right? They want women who are much lower on the competitive totem pole. Data data entry clerks, customer service reps, secretaries. Guess what? There are many more of them then there are female executives and CEOs. So once again, it's the men who have the pick of the women they want. Think about the cliche we all know about. The, the cliche of the, of the CEO fucking his secretary, right? We all know the CEO fucking his secretary, Don Draper and all that, right? He's higher value than she is. He makes more money. He tells her what to do. He has power. He gives her instructions, etc. The secretary is in a subservient position. She does what she's told. She asks his permission. She doesn't get out of pocket. She defers to him. That dynamic alone is conducive to physical attraction on both ends. He's dominant. She's submissive. Of course, the CEO is going to fuck his secretary. It's inevitable. So yes, Stacy, there are more male executives and high-powered men in America than women. But those men don't want these women with power, money, and status. And even if, even if a male CEO married a female CEO, he's cheating on her with his 23-year-old secretary. He didn't marry this woman because he loves her. He married her because it's beneficial to his brand and his business. So if ever there was an exception to the rule, it ain't because he's actually more attracted to that kind of woman than the kind of woman he's used to fucking. And here's the thing. Women are starting to figure it out, and they're pissed. They feel like they've been duped. They were told to get all this money and all this status and all this influence and they'd be able to attract any man they want. And the more they get, the harder it is to find a man because their very female nature cannot love and respect a man who is not superior to her in every way. It can't be done. Let's take it to a lower level. A female junior partner at a law firm isn't going to date, fuck, or marry a law clerk or a first year. 
Worst case scenario, she'll date laterally and maybe get with another junior partner, but that's the worst case scenario. What she really wants is the senior partner. Let's go even lower than that. A female supervisor at a warehouse doesn't want to fuck the forklift driver. She doesn't even want to get with the assistant supervisor. She wants to marry the plant manager. She wants to date the guy in charge of her. I don't make the rules, guys. Stacy, I don't make the rules, sweetheart. This is how it is. And like I said, women are starting to figure it out. The high-powered female attorney is pissed off big time because big time male attorneys want nothing to do with her. The female executive is fucking miserable because she now knows why she is no longer attracted to the men who used to make her pussy wet on her way up the corporate ladder. Okay. All right, Stacy, you've got cars, you've got money, you've got friends. You can travel and you can buy pretty much anything you want. You work your ass off, right? You're 47 and fabulous. But again, what you really want, Stacy, is a man. And at the end of the night, when Stacy is laying in her $8,000 bed with her 8,000 thread count sheets, she cries herself to sleep because she's now she's just now figuring out that the more wealth, status, and power and influence she gets, the less the men that she wants will want her. Her taste is too expensive for her sexual market value, and it's always going to be that way. So what does Stacy do? She calls up her doctor and gets him to call in yet another prescription for Ambien to help knock her out at night, Lexapro to keep her from committing suicide, and value, Valium to keep her anxiety about being alone at 47 years old under control. <laughs> 